Hi, I'm Tony DeMarco. And I'm Lorraine Scotty Hogue. So we are playing Barkley Ball. So we <laughs> we use color mapping specifically to actually uh, minimize the amount of ROM uses that we use. So if we wanted as much content as we could possibly have, we basically use 5% of the RAM memory by just using different uh, bit combinations and different uh, color maps for different pictures. Just to give you an idea, um, we had a s when we were testing originally, we had a small picture that was 80 by 80 pixels of the 49ers logo. In 32 bits per pixel, that took up almost 10% of the block. So the fact that we have full screen size images and sprite animations and music, and we're using under 6% is means that I mean, what we did is we compressed everything down to the minimum number of bits necessary to pack as much content as we wanted. Yeah, it's, also, it's also pretty expandable, right? So if we wanted different stages that do different things, or different sprites, or different power-ups, um, and different themes, it's pretty easy to implement. Uh, just because you basically have to draw a strike, plug it in, and um, the game logic is pretty much the same. And, but you would have to program the, the power up specifically if you wanted different ones. But otherwise, uh, it's pretty flexible. So we have a little music, but we, pr we both programmed it th thinking that the other one knew how to read music or knew anything about music. But so, so the sounds you're hearing were our copyrighted tunes that have been remade in an original sound. It is go. our own original so, composition. Yes, yeah, our own go. original composition. So, uh, the graphics and everything we drew ourselves, um, the sprite animation, uh, each sprite takes up one little individual block RAM, and we just cycle through which parts of the memory we're reading to figure out which frame to draw. Um, as for the, uh, okay, so that's all the image compression and sound and all that stuff. Um, behind us is uh, one of our fun ideas that we had while working on this stuff. Uh, we thought since we were already processing pixels for moving, the, for tracking the camera around and all that stuff, we could uh, do a blue screen. So in the game, uh, we have a full screen sized image that's used as a backdrop. And so when the camera sees a pixel that matches the screen color, it replaces that with our background image. So you'll see Barkley's doghouse and happy little crayon, <laughs> sun shining background. Uh, and it looks very reminiscent of an old NES game or Sierra PC adventure game. Except uh, you guys are in 32 bit color. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, so we're in 32 bit color, but and we don't program like we're in 32 bit color. <laughs> so it it changes it to 32 bit color, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so the blue screen and it actually makes it a lot of fun because it makes it feel makes you. I'm gonna throw out the video game term immersion. It's more immersive. It makes you feel like you're really there in the game. Okay. Um, what's it? Uh, we have our own. Uh, for changing paddle thresholds and background and uh, blue screen effects, I mean, obviously, it's very difficult to get the cameras to actually track the colors we want, uh, especially since our camera hardware we're provided with automatically readjusts. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, Microsoft's user friendliness mm. hardware. Uh, so every time we'd get a camera threshold we thought was great for a green or for red or for blue or whatever color we were tracking, the camera would automatically readjust to to and change all the color values. So we have our own little mini operating system here that can dynamically change color thresholds. Uh, here, we'll show you. We'll show you after we do the demo. They have everything set up to run right now on the blue screen. But it, actually, one thing that's nice about it is the blue screen is that it gives you a little consistency. And apparently, all when when you have to wear a white shirt, and when you wear a dark shirt to get the contrast, and then it's that's pretty pretty evenly. <laughs> but yeah, we'll we'll run through a, we'll run through a game really quick and show you guys what we're playing, and then we'll uh, show you we can change stuff. Okay, sound um, good? Let's see it. Cool. Okay, so we're ready for our game demo? We're ready. Yeah, so, okay, good, good. So, uh, let's see, should we do a, should we actually play the game first? Let's play the, the game first, yeah. Okay, so let's play a game of Barkley Ball. Okay, and uh, Barkley is is Tony's dog, so this is a, a uh, vague representation of him. Uh, okay, so are you ready? Uh, is your paddle ready? I'm ready. Your positions? I'm okay, position. let's start. That's one of our jams. Okay, <laughs> so here's... So you can see Barkley's little house in the background. Uh, uh, and so his little tennis ball is what we're bouncing around. And it has its own sort of uh, vague <laughs> sense of physics. So depending on where the ball hits, uh, the paddle changes the Y velocity. And over time, the X velocity just increases. So as the game goes on, the ball gets faster and faster. You guys have to, is it near, in, is it inverted somehow? Yeah. It's no. Is it intuitive? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, it's, no, it's, it's okay. It looks like it's backwards. 
That's awesome. Uh, it's, it's not mirrored to me. I think. Well, no, no, it must be just that we're looking. At this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are, are ways to change things too. Uh, okay. Oh, and Barkley brings presents around. So ah. Okay. Right. So Tony just got the bone power up, which gives him an extra bone. <laughs> uh, various the things. Yeah. Okay. So this is the ghost. To make jokes. So this is the ghost. <laughs> so there was the ghost. Uh, the ghost causes a player's paddle to be alpha blended on a cape, uh, on a timer. So every now and then you'll see Tony's paddle will disappear. There's one last power up. Uh, if we can get it before I beat Tony uh, terribly, nine, uh, ten to one. He's got the bone. Okay, so I won. Uh, yeah, the extra the bone by itself is actually really good, but when the bone, if you've got the bone and you're ghosted, it's impossible. <laughs> you're, just, you're dead. Okay, but let's see if we can get the last power up to show I'm up. I'm still trying not to make jokes off everything he says. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. Okay, so you've seen the bone and you've seen the ghost power up, and. And all the and all the nice blending and things that are going on. Uh, there's one last power up if we can get it to show up. Um, the pile of poop. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, nice. uh, let's Classy. see if we can let's see if we can get it to show. Up. So Barkley comes when someone's score has either a three or a six. Uh, so I'm just uh, gonna go ahead and grab that. Let's see if we can get. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm just gonna beat Tony until it comes. Beat him terribly. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can play catch with. Okay, so come on, give us, give it, give it. There we there go. go. Yay! Well, the best it. power up of all. There's nothing. Just it just puts a piece of poop in it. <laughs> yeah. It's got flies. Uh, there was a fly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was a fly. So there was like a fly and it alpha blended. So oh. yeah, that was pretty exciting. Yeah, Very so the cool. poo alpha bl alpha blends away. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so let me tell you about the pictures that, are, and, and occasionally there's an empty present. So uh, occasionally bark people feel like playing a trick on you and just give you nothing. What did you use for the random number? <laughs> um, actually, we decided not to use the random numbers. We just have a counter that increments. And so uh, four numbers. Um, it's a empty present, bone, ghost, and poo. So so it counter just increments all the time. Yeah, so just like, so depending on what, oh yeah, and the way the power up works is the ball opens the present. Whatever that counters on when the ball hits it okay. is the so power. That's your source of randomness right there. Yeah. 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 So it, it's going so quickly. I mean, every frame that counter changes. Sure. And it's not so a really long game. So, I mean, it's very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's Barkley Ball. So uh, uh, Scott's going to show you briefly the Pong OS. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Let's see. Cool. So uh, <laughs> we reset everything. So you'll see. Okay, so here's, yeah, so here's our Pong OS. It's sort of our pseudo operating system. So there's a couple of commands you can enter. Uh, for example, if we want to do, a, we want to change a paddle threshold color. For example, let's say I want to change the paddle one, the left paddle. Uh, let's make it. So, let me, uh, so let's say paddle one high threshold color. Let's change it to something bluish. So let's do zero 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 ff. And you'll notice the paddle changes color to something blue. Uh, so you can change high and low thresholds for the left and right paddles. You can also change the background, uh, what the blue screen color is, with the uh, background high and background low. And so then it, you can type in a number, and it can be uppercase or lowercase hexadecimal numbers. So yada, yada, yada. Uh, and backspace works. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, so there's a little operating system. You can also, if you wanted it, have some fun stuff like I want to change up, let's say paddle to alpha. I can set a default alpha value for the for the red paddle here. So you can play with a half faded paddle if you wanted to. Uh, for most of the problem. So yeah. Um, so those are all the fun little extra details you can do in our game. Uh, Take a bow. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got